What is going on, my podcast listeners? Back at it with the car vlog to get you the best fitness and health advice out there in the industry. Um, Today, what I want to talk about is the importance of joint health. So I've done uh, one episode on this probably a year ago. And it's funny, I've been repeating a lot of the stuff that I've brought up on my show, but you know, as each year goes by, I just learn so much more and have a better um, concept and grasp ideas and theories and methods better than I ever did before. So I kind of want to expand on the topic. So this is basically going to be like a part two And I think I'm going to kind of go into a series of the importance of joint health. So um, in my first episode, I kind of just touch on the topic a little bit in the sense of the reason why joint health is so important is that it really regulates everything that we do. And kind of going off of the most recent course I took through... um, functional range systems, the internal strength model, if you think about every single external movement that we do, like the way you get out of bed in the morning and how you do your bench press, your squat, your deadlift, your run, your climbing, whatever movement that we do, it is determined by how well your internal system functions. So what do I mean by that? Every major joint in your body has multiple nerve endings that provide information to your nervous system to create movement by figuring out where you are in space and time. And an example of this is, say you roll your ankle and you know, after that acute phase of um, having it swollen, you don't want to put any weight on it or anything like that, you kind of get to a point where you start putting, you know, weight back on it. And it's almost kind of awkward. You almost kind of forgot how to move through that joint because you injured it, right? So in the mechanism like an injury, your nervous system will do everything it's in its power to shut down that injured area to protect you. But if you don't give information back into that joint, then that joint is going to have a very difficult time giving your brain and nervous system the information of where you are in space and time. And then that gets into, you know, your ankle is now weaker. Now you can't produce enough force and you can't navigate through the movement riddles as a lot of people in my um, circle will call it and how this translates to training in general is that if I have a joint that's not functioning at its highest capacity that it can then no matter what exercise I do I won't get the result I'm looking for and you know to translate this into like you know some people will be like oh Raph like I listen to your podcast because I'm really interested in weight loss this a hundred percent is a huge huge thing to know and understand because if your primary goal is weight loss then you obviously know you need to exercise aka movement I would argue, and people would probably agree with me, that in order to be successful in the weight loss department, you need consistent days in the gym or just in general doing fitness. But if I have a joint that doesn't function the way it should, and I decide to do a certain exercise where my joint capacity is not there, and I get that little tweak in my back, my knee starts getting sore, then that takes away from my goal of weight loss because now I have less consistent days in the gym. I have less, you know, higher intensity workouts that most people think is the end all be all. 
but now I have less time being consistent and then it's going to be that much harder to get back into the swing of things when your knee, back, wrist, elbow, whatever it is, settles down finally. Because a lot of times, like the biggest thing that I see right now is I'm getting a lot of people coming to me where they're trying to get consistent in the gym, but something keeps flaring up. So they have to take time off and then they have to restart all over again. And then the intensity has to be modified and the exercises have to be modified. And then you're like, well, now I don't even know what to do. So this is why joint health is so vital because it allows us to do whatever we want to do. And, you know, those people that are listening right now that have gone through this vicious cycle, they'll also know that, oh, when I went to physio or chiro or massage, they told me that my glute med is weak and that's causing my hip pain, knee pain, low back pain, whatever, and I need to do more glute med exercises. Sure, that's definitely a thing that will help. But give a scenario like this, most likely that hip that's attached to the glute med is probably not at its peak performance to even move in the ranges that would activate glute med in its entirety. So you could do all the clamshells, mini band walks, and leg lifts you can think of, but if your hip is at 40% of 100%, then you're only going to strengthen that glute med to 40%. And that's where people, like when I tell this uh, to new clients in person, when I do an assessment, they're like, holy fuck, that makes a lot of sense. And this is why I've been pushing this past year so much emphasis on joint health. This is the biggest mistake I see is that people just throw the idea of mobility training, that it's just stretching and it doesn't do shit. But what I'm trying to convey now is that Mobility training is not just stretching out your hamstring for 30 seconds after a workout. It's intentional and influencing the connective tissue of every major major joint in order for you to perform whatever exercise you want more effectively. And I think when people grasp this concept, they're like, holy shit, I'm leaving a lot on the floor. So I'll give you a scenario. Most people have limitations in their shoulders and their hips and they'll complain that you know as they get um, consistent in the gym their you know bench press is not going up their back squat is not going up and things are now starting to hurt and all they have really is oh I'm going to do more sets I'm going to do more volume I'm going to do more intensity but and this is a post that I put out this morning where if I took someone's shoulder joint and that same individual is having problems getting their um, bench press up or their overhead press up, if you look at the structure of the shoulder joint, all the deep, deep connective tissue stuff, your ligaments, your tendons, your capsule, if I could lay down more anatomy meaning you can actually influence how your body lays down new tissue to be more um, effective when producing a movement because the stronger connective tissue is, the more it can take on load, the more force it can produce, meaning your bench press will go up just by influencing the connective tissue. Like this is not like rocket science, it's just how our bodies are designed. And that stimulus will 100% break through any kind of plateaus. But also, now that we've taken time to actually work on the connective tissue, you'll actually have a little bit more uh, in a sense of recovery for all the external structures like your actual like pec major, pec minor, things like that. The deeper you go, the more the outside stuff can actually recover. You know, you smashing the weights every week and getting incredibly sore all the time is not going to fix the strength problem that you're having. It's not going to fix the plateau that you're having. It's a small little piece to the bigger picture. So if I had an individual with a lacking shoulder press or bench press, I'm going to for sure make sure that their shoulder joint 
elbow and wrist are functioning at a high level. And the biggest thing that I see is when I take people through an assessment and we get to the point of going through the car's assessment and I take them through a shoulder car and they have no idea where they are in space and time. And a lot of times I'm like, this is the lowest hanging fruit. Like you could literally do the shoulder car, you know, every single day and do nothing else, like literally nothing else. And like you did like in 30 shoulder cars on each arm every single day for the next month, guaranteed you'd feel better and have better performance in the gym. But it almost seems way too simple and way too easy and kind of stupid to do that. But ask yourself when was the last time you actually took your entire shoulder through all the ranges that a shoulder should be able to do. You can never. And I always make this joke that the average person will use their shoulder to um, <clears throat> go on their phone, go on their laptop, and maybe grab a cup out of the cupboard. Anything beyond that, um, there's scenarios where, like, say your phone falls in between the center console of your car and seat, and then you're using your arm to, like, reach down for it, and you end up pulling your entire neck. That's like the only times you use your shoulder. But imagine if you trained your shoulder in all these different ranges and be effective at it and strong at it, like you're going to be laughing of how good you feel. And another rabbit hole to go down to is like the traditional exercises that you do in the gym or have been told to do is this a man-made up exercise where they're like okay bicep curl like done but your elbow joint and shoulder joint and wrist joint do so much more than just a bicep curl like there's so many variables that your body can go to so we're kind of missing a lot on the table when it comes to exercise so imagine if you were overloading and this is kind of like training 101 imagine if you only did bench press every single day and you're overloading your chest tissue, you're going to see that rounded posture because it's all going to pull your shoulders forward and things like that. So now imagine how you train, how everyone trains really right now in these traditional man-made up exercises over and over and over again, putting yourself in a very constricted box. Something's going to go eventually. So now we need to really rethink priorities right you need to ask yourself okay why am i exercising is it weight loss yes then what's going to keep me in the gym or active for a long period of time because we all know that weight loss is not like okay i'm doing a 60 day challenge and everything's going to be fixed because the last 10 years i haven't been eating properly and haven't been exercising at all like it's going to take some time so you got to almost think of longevity and the best way to think of about longevity is joint health because that's the shit that we use every day to just live imagine if you were able to get out of bed without pain imagine you getting out of a chair without pain imagine you bending down to fix the freaking plumbing underneath your sink without going Ugh! to get down there and then like some other grunting noises to get back up imagine if that shit was easy like your life and quality of life would be so much better. And this is why when I take new clients, I'm like, just move your shit every day. But here's the cars routine that you're going to use. And funny enough, I'm going to do a full on follow along cars routine where we do three repetitions each. And this is what I do personally. This is what I give to my clients every single day to do as homework and it's going to change your life like drastically so i'm going to leave it at that hopefully this was helpful if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out thank you thank you thank you for all of the support and help that you guys have been giving me um, if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out and that's it for me you guys until next time as my camera rolls into weird position see you guys